what's up everybody welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here welcome um i'm so glad that you found me if you're returning welcome back i wanted to put this intro together for you guys because today's video is going to be something totally different i've never done this before i know that a lot of people do videos like this on youtube and so i've seen them everywhere so i can't tag the specific person that i got the idea from but it's basically going to be a week of workouts all the workouts that i do in any given week now i've been following the same workout split for um almost two years so i haven't changed anything about the way that i've trained or the muscle groups that i've been training for the past two years i am a bikini competitor i compete in the bikini bodybuilding division so my workouts are specifically tailored to the shape and the body parts that i am particularly lagging so we're talking about glutes we're talking about shoulders and we're talking about lats a little bit as well those are going to be the main focus that you see throughout this video i do train legs four times a week and um, I train glutes twice a week. So you're gonna see two different varieties of glute days. I try to make sure that I incorporate different compound movements in each one, but honestly, across the board, my workouts are pretty similar um, pretty much every single week. I may change the order that I do them in or what days I do them in. I might alternate whether I have a heavy day or a day where I focus on time under tension and mind-muscle connection, but the movements, the core movements are pretty much always the same. So take a seat. It's going to be a long one. I'm going to talk you guys through every single day of workouts. I did try to mic them up, but every gym that I go to plays music. And so it's just much easier if I can just talk you guys through it in a voiceover. So it's going to be a long video. Hopefully you get some information out of this. Hopefully you get some inspiration out of this. And don't forget to comment anything you want. Thumbs up the video, thumbs down the video, whatever it is. Let me know what you want to see from me next. And if you have any questions about any of the exercises or anything at all, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm going to put my handle on the screen right here so that you can follow me there. I post daily content there and I'm also in a prep right now for my next bikini competition. So if you want to see what that's all about, make sure that you stick around because I do weekly vlogs. Usually I do two vlogs every single week um, and I'm going to try and do that through the end of my season, but we have a long way to go. So don't worry, there's plenty of content coming up. I do want to sprinkle in some more videos similar to this one that are just a little bit more educational and interesting. So again, if there's anything at all that you want to know from me, leave it down below and I think I've said enough let's get right into this week of workouts in my life as a bikini competitor and a fairly new one so let me know what you think I'm excited I hope you like the video bye guys we are starting off the week with my favorite lift day and that is back day. I'm also gonna be working some rear delt and side delts on this day just because I really need it. But starting with a lat pull down variation, I start a lot of my back days with this specific variation. And if you see, I'm really getting a stretch all the way at the top. And I want you to think of dropping your shoulders and pulling down from your elbows and really contracting those lats keeping your chest up towards the bar that's also going to help you really engage those lats and I'm going up and wait for every set of this the same thing with a narrow grip pull down I'm going to start by stretching all the way up and then dropping my shoulders and pulling to my chest and really engaging those lats in this movement I love to do these back to back because it really exhausts my lats and helps me feel them during the entire workout. This is what it looks like from the side. As you can see, my chest is high. I'm dropping the shoulders and I'm focusing on bringing the elbows down, trying to keep my arms out of this movement as much as I possibly can. Moving on to a seated wide grip row. This is my favorite seated row variation that's not on a machine. And I like this because it also hits my rear delts. Again, keeping your chest up, keeping your back nice and engaged, stretching forward and then pulling from the elbows back. You want to pull the, the bar to your belly button and really contract in the squeezing portion of that movement. Going into a single arm lateral pull down variation. I like to do this on this particular machine. Um, it's not meant to be used this way, but I find that this is a really good way for me to target my lats one at a time. 
Again, keeping the back nice and straight. Good posture is so important for lifting. And underhand grip, stretching all the way up, dropping the shoulder and a pulling from the lat. Thinking about leading with the elbow in the movement, I do grab the handle that is behind me because I find that I get better engagement this way than grabbing the one that's in front of me and it helps me keep my arm in line with my torso a little bit better. I do use my other hand to brace on the machine and I can really load this machine up. My lats really like this movement pattern. So if you haven't tried this, definitely I recommend you give it a try. It's a really, really good variation of a lat pull down that you can do somewhere that's not a cable. Right next to this machine is the rear delt fly on the pec deck. I love this rear delt fly variation because it's so easy for me to feel the contraction in my rear delts. So what you're gonna wanna do is put your chest towards the seat and your butt away from the seat, keeping your posture up, your back is nice and erect, and you're squeezing those rear delts. This is what it looks like from the side. You just wanna push your arms till they're parallel with your body but you don't want to overextend and go behind you you're gonna feel the cramping start in the rear delts if you're doing this correctly and again increasing weight but not too much going into tuesday tuesday is always my hamstring day the first movement that i do on my hamstring days is usually some kind of rdl variation or some kind of good morning here i am on the v squat machine and I'm trying a particular variation this time where I'm keeping my chest kind of high and really focusing on sending my hips across the room to the back of the room to really get that stretch through the back of the legs. You can get a better picture of it from the side here. I like to use a belt on this movement just so that I can make sure that I stay injury free and that I'm not engaging my lower back at all. Going back as far as you can without compromising proper form and without letting your back cave in. And again, I'm going to keep loading this machine until I can no longer safely perform a complete set. You're gonna see here I'm going a little heavier and really pushing those hips back and keeping that weight distributed through my heels. Next after that is gonna be a wide leg press variation. I love this for my hamstrings. I really feel it in my hamstrings and especially in that glute ham tie-in area. I don't know what it is about a wide leg press for me, but it just feels like if I do it this way, my hamstrings do all the work. So I really like to include these in my hamstring days. Sometimes I'll do them single legs. Sometimes I'll do both like I am here. I also love the single leg standing hamstring curl. This is important that you don't shift your back. So people have a tendency to like arch and kind of round their back on these to kind of help them get the weight up. If you're doing that, drop the weight and make sure that you really focus on only recruiting the hamstrings to do this movement. And the last thing that I did was a lying hamstring curl. And if you know me, you know that I absolutely hate the lying hamstring curl. So I put it in my program because that's the only way you get better at stuff that you don't like. So lying ham curls, I did do four sets of these, 12 to 15 reps. And the last set, I always do a drop set just to really finish off killing my hamstrings. Going into my glute day on Wednesday. This is my first glute day of the week. It's always on Wednesday. I'm gonna start off with a simple hip thrust on this hip thrusting machine. I love a good hip thrust machine. I hate setting up a traditional hip thrust. So I usually do this machine or I will do it on the Smith machine. I like the engagement that I get. I like the control and the stability and I just hate dragging that barbell around. So I just tend not to do it, honestly. Um, on this machine in particular, I wanna make sure that my feet are lined up, my heels are directly below my knees. And starting off the first set with just one plate, really focusing on that contraction and that mind muscle connection and warming up those glutes, warming up the hips, warming everything up with the first set. I usually do this with every exercise. The first set of every exercise that I do is just a low weight so that my body can get acclimated to the movement that's about to come. I slowly lower down and then drive my hips up to the top, making sure that my chin remains tucked and that I'm really contracting those glutes and I try to keep my knees pushing outward during the entire set just to make sure that I am getting as much glute activation as possible and that nothing else is really taking over this movement for me. 
So you're going to do 12 to 15 reps on each set. You can do as many reps as you can of these, um, but I do recommend at least 10 to 12. The second set, I added a little bit more weight. Again, the same thing, making sure that my knees and my heels are in a line, keeping my chin nice and tucked and really lowering down slowly and contracting. Now for me, this still isn't really a hard working set. Two plates still feels pretty easy and kind of like a warm up for me. Obviously it's a little bit heavier, but I didn't wanna jump from one plate straight into three plates because I wasn't planning on going very heavy this time. So I like to focus one of my glute days on going very heavy and the other glute day I try to focus on doing a lot of high volume sets. So 12 to 15 reps again and going into my final set my my biggest working set that's going to be three plates on this machine now you're going to see me take my shirt off here in a second and i'm going to use my shirt to put on my hips because i have some bony hips and usually the belts on these machines just kill my hips like i cannot take it and i never want that to be a limiting factor on completing the movement so anytime that i have an oversized t-shirt like this which i usually do i will take it off and just put it on my hips for a little bit of extra cushion um so that that way i'm not cringing with every single rep because those things really hurt especially when you start putting three and four plates on each side like my hips cannot take it so that's what i'm doing here just adjusting the belt trying to get myself all set up and it's going to be the same setup again making sure that your feet are in line and your knees are right underneath or your knees are right on top of your heels and making sure that everything is the way that you like it that you're low enough on the seat that you're lifting from your hips it's not riding onto your stomach or going any further than your hips you know just getting all of those things out of the way bracing myself and getting pumped for the first rep is always something that I do on hip thrust because they're just so heavy and they're so taxing for me so if you see me lollygagging here that's exactly what I'm doing so getting it up again making sure I'm contracting at the top slowly lowering down and always controlling the weight through the entire set down and up as many times as I can until my um, form starts to suffer so once my form starts to suffer or I feel like I can no longer do another rep that is when I stop usually that's anywhere between the 12 to 15 rep range and that's how I choose my weights I choose weights that I can complete 12 to 15 reps of and have that feeling by the end of the set so that was a long hip thrust set moving on to the next exercise now this is a Smith machine elevated sumo deadlift so i do like this um, i've been playing around with variations of this just because i normally do deadlift sumo deadlift from the floor but something about this movement pattern allows me to get a little bit more depth and load my glutes a little bit better so i do like to include this from time to time in my workouts so that's what I'm doing here, just getting up there, kind of feeling out the machine. This, I believe, was already like my third set. So I'm going to go ahead and stand in a sumo stance, grab it, keeping the knees nice and wide, keeping my torso as straight as I can, dropping down into a deep wide squat and squeezing and driving my hips forward into the bar on the way up. When I'm going down so low, I'm really trying to load the glutes with all the weight so that they're doing all the work and nothing else is really doing anything for me. And what you wanna do is just make sure that you keep your glutes nice and high so that you don't get a butt wink at the bottom of the squat. Sometimes it does happen to me um, if I'm not being mindful, but in this particular set, I think I did a pretty good job at keeping my glutes nice and high and engaged the entire time through the entire set. And again, going for a high volume on this day, so not loading up the bar too terribly much, but these were freaking hard, you guys. I mean, you can see it on my face. They were no joke. Abductions. Okay, again, there are several ways to do abductions. I'm either doing them heavy or I'm doing a lot of reps. Now, when I'm doing a lot of reps, I'm also going as heavy as I can while executing the movement. So that doesn't mean that I'm definitely necessarily going light. I'm just not going as heavy as I would be if I was doing like a heavy 
focused lift. So here you see me kind of leaning my shoulders into the pad and my hips are slightly forward. You can do this or you can also sit up nice and tall on the chair, really using that top part of your glute to squeeze and push that weight outward. And you wanna hold on to the handles if you can reach them so that you can really lock yourself into the seat. Now in this particular set, I think I did 15 or 12. And then I leaned forward and did the same amount leaning forward. It's just gonna target your glutes in a different way. You have a little bit of a longer set, you get more volume in of these, and you don't have to worry about going super heavy because that volume is gonna make up for that. But these are also really, really challenging. I sometimes see people doing abductions and like falling asleep on the machine. And if you feel like it's so easy, you are not doing enough. So definitely put that weight up or try to do more reps because these should burn. I mean, look at my face, like I am not having it on this day. Going into my final exercise for this day, I'm gonna do a glute focused step up. So getting a box that is high, higher than your knee, you're going to put it in front of something where you can hold on and really get a stretch where you can step as far back from the box as you possibly can. Now the whole, point of doing this exercise is that you're loading the standing leg as much as possible so I'm barely tapping the floor here and I think in one of these reps I don't even touch the floor you really want to focus on sending your glutes to the back of the room really hinging at the hip and that working leg is doing all the work you're pushing through the heel to get yourself up and that other leg is just tapping on the ground you really want to make sure that you're holding on to something so that you have that stability and you're not really worried about falling over obviously so just as many of these as you can on each leg and i was super setting these with the abductions because on this particular day i didn't have a lot of time but i do still like to make sure i get at least four to five exercises in so doing the second leg same thing really reaching back as far as you can tapping with the your toe of the of the supporting leg on the floor and really coming up pushing through the heel of that working leg and these are really going to burn out that lower glute if you do them correctly these are some of my favorite extra my favorite exercises to include at the end of a glute day because they really really just burn your glutes all the way out all right fridays we have a shoulder day so i'm starting off here with a seated machine plate loaded overhead press say that three times fast um, as you can see the plates are behind me and the machine is plate loaded so i really like that um, i like to work on machines like this when i don't have the dumbbells available that i want to use so i love the way this machine is set up it's really smooth i like the range and it's a basic overhead press so as many sets and reps of those as you can do moving right into a lateral raise ladder so starting with 10 pound dumbbells going to 15 doing 12 uh, reps of each set so 10 15 and then now going to the 20s and i'm just doing partial lateral raises and this is one set so I did four sets just like this to really burn out those side laterals. Then I'm going into a face pull variation. This is the first time that I do these with the rope in a long time, and I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. So face pulls with the rope, I like to pull them to like between my eyebrows and really make sure that my elbows are back so that I can get that engagement and that squeeze in my rear delt you can really see my rear delts kind of popping out here which is really great and i super set that with a cable front raise now these don't look like much but let me tell you they are absolutely killer i can only do five pounds on these and honestly that's all you need because your arms will be burning make sure that you're standing far enough away from the machine so that when you bring your hand down you get a little bit of stretch to the back and your muscle has to work just a little harder to come up but you can see in my face the suffering of this i was not having this either going into a machine lateral raise we're really burning out the side delts here and doing as many reps as possible on this machine lateral raise you don't need to go super heavy with your side delts as long as you really do as many reps as you can Saturdays are always my quad day. So starting off with a 
leg press. It's low, it's narrow, it's quad focused, and it is pretty heavy. I did go pretty heavy on this quad day in particular. So what you want to focus on for this leg press is that you're getting as much knee flexion as possible so that your hamstrings are not doing all the work, but instead your quads are. So put your feet a little lower on the platform and that way you'll be able to make sure that your quads and your knees are flexing to move that heavy weight. I did four to five sets of this. Again, the first one was just a little warm up and we went up in weight from there for every single set. So after this, we went right into the hack squat. I didn't go heavy on the hack squat just because I've been having some pain um, in my left hamstring and it was getting irritated by this movement. So kept it pretty light but I did do a higher rep range I think I did 15 reps in each set the hack squat is the same thing you want to keep your feet closer to you so that you get as much knee flexion as possible and your quads are really being targeted by this squatting motion you want to make sure that your glutes are glued to the seat your back is nice and engaged you have nice strong shoulders supporting you and you can really push through the entire foot so that you are getting as much engagement in the quad as you possibly can as long as you're not locking your knees out at the top you will be good to go these are killer anytime i do them i regret it so then i went into a one and a half goblet squat variation it's pretty self-explanatory raise your heels up with little plates and just go ahead and drop it like it's hot essentially grab a dumbbell and one and a little pulse coming up to the top i did 15 reps on these sets and these are killer because i super set them with the leg press which is right next to it that's why i'm standing in this awkward middle of the gym but these were killer and the heavier you go with these the harder they are obviously um these were just with 20 pounds so leg extensions were super set with those and this was the last combo for this particular quad day and i did five sets of this and the last one was a triple drop set where i did 10 reps 10 reps 10 reps and then 15 reps to finish so leg extensions are no joke at the end of a quad day and the last glute day for the week we're going to do a heavy abduction set so here i'm doing almost the entire stack um, we're going for 10 to 12 reps and you see that my range is getting smaller as the set continues because it is getting harder and harder for me to push it and I believe this was my last one so I did a drop set where I did the full stack and then I reduced the weight in half and I did 20 reps just to burn out that last set and this was the very first exercise so it's safe to say but after this, my glutes were already pre-exhausted and ready to go get into the rest of the workout. These are some of my favorite exercises for the top and side glute muscles, and I think more people should incorporate them. Everybody's least favorite exercise, Bulgarian split squats. Here I am doing Bulgarian split squats with two 45 pound dumbbells. These were so difficult for me um, on this particular day. I was just so tired. I don't know what the problem was, but we still did 12 on each side, four sets of those, and finished out the workout with some cable kickbacks and some hyper extensions. I didn't show the hyper extensions because we left kind of in a rush, but these are your basic cable kickbacks. These were hard and really heavy as well, and I was sore for the entire day after this workout so that was it you guys that's my week of workouts thank you so so much for watching this video if you have any questions please leave them down below for me i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that you got some useful information out of it let me know if you want me to do another video like this in the future i would definitely be willing to do that because it was fun to just record every single workout that i did this week um, and it's interesting to watch them back in order as well. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.